his home games. That is Rick Zamprin from 900 CHML Radio. Steve Milton from the Hamilton Spectator. I'm Scott Radley from the Hamilton Spectator and 900 CHML Radio. And Bubba O'Neill, our usual fourth, is still recovering from his bout with COVID. We will expect to see Bubba back soon. Hope he's back soon. Get better, Bubba, soon. Again, soon. Uh, story last week that dominated the headlines in the sports world was the story of Tom Wilson and the New York Rangers and the Washington Capitals and whether he should be suspended or not suspended and how much and repeat offenders and on and on and on. Guys, the story, the details of the story have been covered endlessly. We don't need to go into those. Everyone has their opinion on whether the decision was right, wrong or otherwise. The question is this. And Steve, I'll go to you first on this one. Does the NHL's discipline process work? Because it seems that with great regularity, there is great upset at what ends up coming out of that office. Is that just a natural form and function of you're disciplining someone? Or does this is this thing broken? I don't know if it's broken. I, I don't I've never thought it worked very well. And I don't think discipline committees uh, or, and, and the way the whole structure, I don't mean just the committee, but the structure is set up, uh, works very well uh, in most cases. And I, and, and I think I use baseball as, as a bigger example on that. Um, I, I think the committee, you know, I, I didn't like the tone of the NHL letter when, when they find the Rangers, but I, I see where they had to do that. You cannot go into individually. You can't individually attack somebody who works for the league office or, or your peers with, any, with that kind of language. That said, uh, the Rangers 100% right in my mind uh, in, in the content of, of that letter. But um, the problem I think partly comes down to the players as well, because both players, and this is really evident in baseball, um, both players, the one, the perpetrator and the victim, let's use those for simple terms, uh, are members of the union and often the union forgets that they represent both sides on 100%, 100%. That. And, and, and and that's where i think the structure often falls down i don't know how you get around that because that's not necessarily a league structure but there's i don't easy answer for that steve pardon? there's an easy answer for that uh, i'm saying from the league yes yeah, but i'm saying the it league says the league says to the union look you guys fight every penalty we try to give out you guys fight the fine maximum you do everything we are washing our hands. We're Judas or we're, we're Pontius piloting this. We are handing you the discipline. You represent both these players. The NHL is out of the discipline business. The NHL Players Association is now responsible. And you figure out how you represent both these guys and where the balance is between the guy who got who's the victim and the guy who's the aggressor. And within your members, you make a decision that you're going to be happy with. Rick, I, I, I have an answer that Rick, go ahead. No, yeah, I, I think that would be a very interesting, you know, to, to see how they would figure out what constitutes what kind of fine or suspension or whatever the case is. I wouldn't necessarily say the NHL's disciplinary department is broken, although it does need some tweaks and maybe it needs some standards or some benchmarks. You know, if you do this, you get, you know, one to five games or whatever the case is, or five to ten, how egregious the is. I mean, you know, we saw earlier this year, Alex Ovechkin pitchfork a guy in the Bruins and he got a $5,000 fine. We see Pebble Buchnevich, uh, you know, cross check an opponent in the face and he gets a one game suspension. So is one worse than the other? I know one's a headshot. The other one's very, you know, touchy as well. At the end of the day, I think the league needs to come together with the Players Association or maybe even have an independent committee that handles this kind of thing. So that committee is made up of former players, maybe former coaches and GMs, maybe even some former officials as well. And they are the new disciplinary committee. Because right now, you know, more often than not, they kind of miss the mark on their suspensions and their fines and, and whatnot. And Steve, it's I want to go back to you, but just on your point about the, the, the cross-check to the face getting in one game. Rick, here's where it gets even more. You said, let's set a standard. Well, mm -hmm. it wasn't that long ago. Someone put it up on Twitter this week, the video of Zidane Chara, I think last year or the year before, cross-checking Brendan Gallagher in the face much more viciously yeah. than Bushnevich did. And he got nothing. Yeah. And so even within the same, so saying, well, for this, you get this, but they don't even follow the basic similarity pattern. Man, and, they, and, and, and what they'll always, what they'll always tell you, because hockey is a free form game is that they can, and they can say this, and I'm not saying that they're right in saying this, 
Uh, but because it's a free flow game and every situation, almost just by a quarter inch of the body turn and all of those kinds of things, players, and generally the, the discipline committee is run by a former player, uh, at least at some point. And, 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 uh, they'll tell you that's a little bit, bit different. I don't think you can put in discipline into the hands of, 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 of the union itself, or you'll get into all kinds of way more unintended consequences than you could ever think. For instance, let's use, let's suppose, let's suppose that this Chera and the Wilson things were similar. The players like Chera, but they don't like Wilson because yep. of other things. You could get a whole bunch of other thing here. You got to get a whole bunch of it, it, tech or theoretically you could end up with, you know, witch hunts and those kinds of things. You never let, and plus the players don't always know what they sell. They think that, you know, the players, you, you have to listen to, how, you know, how the game is played, right? You can't tell them to play six games in seven days or that kind of thing. Cause only players know what that'll do to you. But and so they, they use that to tether management and the kinds of things that management would like to do. But players don't know exactly what it takes to sell the game elsewhere, the marketing and all of those kinds of things. And, and I'm not saying that the, the discipline push you part of that. I just think you don't always turn things over to the players. Uh, yeah, I, but but Steve, that committee, the, the issue is that too often, and you brought up the point, you're bang on with this. You are 100% right with this is the fact that the union fights only for the the doer of the crime, not the victim of the crime. And it, it, every single time this happens, you see that it seems, and we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. We don't know if they say anything else, but clearly the argument for the aggressor is the stronger argument because it always seems to win. Well, they, 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 that, very uh, rarely. Just, you know, it's, it's that person who's facing the penalty or, or the extra, uh, you know, penalty in terms of a suspension or a fine. But you know, the National Hockey League set themselves up really for failure by not suspending Tom Wilson. I mean, they knew the Rangers and the Capitals were going to play, you know, the, the next night or two nights from that incident. And they could have diffused this whole thing. There would have been no statement from the Rangers. There would have been little to no retaliation in that second game because Wilson's not on the ice. There may have been, you know, another fight to say, hey, you know what? You, what you did to our guy was not right. And, and here's our payback. And it would have ended there. But now you have you know, a $250,000 fine. You have players on both teams who are, you know, come next season, game number one, it's going to happen again. Uh, you have Joe Urge Peros, who was thrown under the bus by one of the teams in the NHL. You have the league, you know, forcing, they, they had to find the Rangers. The Rangers then, you know, uh, their, their owner, uh, you know, makes a pitchfork move in their front office. This all could have been avoided by the NHL saying Tom Wilson gets at least a game. Let's not forget, here's a repeat offender who went after a superstar player and lost his mind. Uh, he should have at least got one game, if not more. Yeah, and 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 of course, the the, the whole thing is quasi legal, right? Because if you if you compare it to a legal system, the prosecution is is the authorities, which would be the NHL uh, in some form or another, and the and the defense uh, is the players, and that's where having you're right. They're defending the players because that's the ones who charge. That's the ones who or who make the appeal. And uh, in baseball, it's about the appeal, and and uh, but the other person is also part part of your group, and that you don't see the same. The same lawyer can't. It doesn't. It, the the crown does. You know, the same lawyer doesn't re represent both uh, mm -hmm. in in the regular legal system. So that's always going to be a little bit funny. I think this some, points out something else here, and we've talked about this at the very start. Maybe this would happen uh, once you had teams playing each other so often mm -hmm. and so regularly, uh, and then early in the season we started to notice it too. That uh, now maybe the the bald numbers aren't up but my eye test tells me i don't like a lot of the stuff that's happening that they're letting go let them play a little bit and it comes down to even things like interference at the blue line a lot more of that they're yeah. allowing players to take that left step to the right and eventually that has an thing up well so does letting a little bit of this go and a little bit of that going and and there have been much more uh in my mind ready much more readiness to, to 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 give that little extra shot after the whistle to the face and those kinds of things that can lead to these kinds of things and this has been coming for some time because of, and, and a large part of it because of the regularity with, with it which with which everybody's playing uh, each other and secondly like everybody else players are second wave fatigued in their head about everything else there's First frustration the thing that I hate about the nhl's justice system and i call it justice system loosely because i don't think it's often just but nonetheless for the last number of decades, it seems more often than not, the guy who is in charge of discipline is a former tough guy or former, uh, certainly it's a player or someone in the game. 
but often, um, as I say, Shanahan, I mean, Shanahan was a skilled player, but he was a tough player. Oh, yeah. Carroll's was a former goon. Uh, uh, Brian Burke was, you know, he was Stu a tough Grimson. Stu Grimson. Here's the thing about that. They keep saying, well, we need to have someone who's been there who understands it. You put in a goon into the justice choosing field and say you need to have someone who's been there is like saying, well, anyone can't be a judge unless you've been a drug dealer to know what is involved in that line of work. Or you, unless you've murdered someone, you can't sit in judgment of someone who in a murder trial. It's a ludicrous position that only hockey is taking. The, the NBA doesn't do this. The NFL doesn't do this. Baseball doesn't do this. They don't say, well, you know, in baseball, anyone who's going to oversee a, a pitcher throwing a 100 mile an hour fastball at a guy's head has to be a guy who has done that. That's insane. They should. This is where the first change should be made. Is you don't have former goons sitting in judgment of these things because their vision and their understanding and their perception is skewed to begin with. I think you have to bring because hockey is that. That's was the point I made off the top. I, you, there, you've got to be some acknowledgement of players in that kind of position because hockey is a bit quite a bit different than the other. Because you've got to uh, because almost everything is a slightly different just because of the speed of the game. Every single hey, thing that looks the hey, same to most well, people. Why Peros then? And why not Daniel and Henrik Sedin? I, 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 I agree with that. And I think hockey culture is embedded in a couple of uh, things that they just felt feel for years that they've never been able to get rid of. And when you look at how long it took to change certain rules that they should have obviously changed, and I'll use the center red ice line uh, yeah. as, as an example of how that has changed the game and not for the bad. And anybody from the outside could have seen that from a long time ago. Those kind that hockey, I'll agree with you, Scott, gets really locked into some some old type school mentalities. And really, this is funny because you know I'm, we're here in Hamilton. We're supposed to be enemies of of, uh, of Gary Bettman, but Bettman's made them look at themselves the last 25 years and and look at almost everything. We don't like his attitude sometimes, but he's made them face. A lot of those facts. Are you kidding? Why are you still mired in this? They haven't got that far with what you're saying. And I agree with what you're saying, Scott. We, we all know that, you know, hockey has the code, quote unquote. You know, baseball has a very similar code in terms of, you know, yeah. you hit a guy, I'm going to hit your guy. Don't slide in the second and, you know, break up the double play uh, too violently. If you're going to injure our guy, we're going to do the same. So it's very similar. Yet I think baseball has got it right in terms of their discipline. I know there's an appeal process and more often than not, those, you know, eight game suspensions are cut down to six or five or whatever the case is. But I think at the end of the day, the NHL's disciplinary committee department needs a bit of an overhaul. And, and maybe it starts with the top person to say, hey, you're out. Let's get in someone else. Yeah. And, and, and to finish, I mean, look, it, again, Steve, if the point is that you have to have a player because you have to have that sense of the game and the speed yeah. and the emotion and everything. You got to know if it can be done. Well, but it, again, it, it, even if you're going to go that route, why is the default position then that the only no. people who can sit in judgment are those who were the aggressors as opposed to those who were the aggressed? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you on that one. And, and, to, and when we look at baseball too, uh, look, there, there's going to be some things here that the baseball players do not like happen in the next two years. And this is, this is why baseball players would never allow, not, not because of the code, but because of a number of other things, but the code would be included. Some of the things, something's going to change in the game. That's pretty radical over the next two or three years, whether it's going to 61 feet on the mound or, or the bigger bases or something. It's already changed at, uh, at, at the, at the, uh, at second base with the phantom tags, those kinds of things that baseball players were very much against the change of that rule. Where this is going to change the NHL, we got to wrap. Where this is going to change, I don't think it's going to be under Gary Bettman because it's clear Bettman in his whole tenure has sort of deferred on this. He's not a hockey guy to begin with. He was a basketball guy. He's, he doesn't want to mesh too much with the – mix too much with the culture. When Gary Bettman moves along and someone else, whether it's Daly or whoever, takes over as new commissioner, that may be the time when this changes. I don't see it happening under Bettman. Anyway, what do you think? Is the NHL's justice system – working fine are we overstating this was everybody overstating this last week with tom wilson or is the nhl's justice system broken or fractured or needing repair let us know subscribe down below comment down below give us your comments we'd love to hear it hit the notification bell we'll talk to you soon